Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish, if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. How are you? What's going on? The sun is out in Michigan. The storm that went across the Midwest, well, across a lot of the country, not just the Midwest, but it kind of missed us. We only got like less than two inches of snow, which doesn't usually happen. And I'm starting to feel like myself again. If you watched me unbox the February Paradise box, we got eight ounces of fiber, and it's a blend of Tussa Silk, Gotland, and Viscose, which I believe is made from bamboo. Is that, I know it's a plant. It's bamboo, right? So it's really like a charcoal color, you can see, right? And a white. It had a yin yang theme, which I do love, by the way. The minute I saw this, I really felt like I wanted to dye it because I figured that the different fibers would take the, the dye differently and I would end up with um, like a tweedy, not a tweed, a heathery kind of yarn, which I love. And also, I started to like turn it over in my head like I do sometimes. That's usually how I do this. I just like kind of let it go through my head over and over until I feel like something occurs to me and it's definitely what I want to do. So way back, I think it was last spring, when John was my hands for unboxing, I think it might have been March, I don't know, I'll link it because I can't remember exactly when it was but that'll say in the link. We unboxed a package from Paradise and it was like five different colors of Shetland that they had new in their shop. So I spun them all, I can't remember, I, I think it was less than two ounces each. I spun them all up and um, plied them all up and started to knit them into a Heim, a Heim sweater from Drops. You guys, everybody knows Drops patterns, right? So I started to knit them into this sweater. It was gonna be for me. But I could tell that every time John looked at it, he had like heart eyes. He was just like, oh, I could tell. As I was going through the yoke, I was like, okay, he really loves this. So I just made the yoke a little broader because his shoulders are broader than mine. Kept going and um, increasing a little longer and then made the sweater in his size. And he wears it all the time. And it's super cozy. I wore it once myself. It is so nice. So I was thinking about how that sweater was supposed to be for me. Ended up being for him. And I was thinking about this. And I decided that's what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna knit the yoke out of this with some other yarn that'll be the body. I haven't picked that out yet. I have a lot of hand spun in my stash that I've made over the years and just put away. So I'll either find something or I'll pair it with a commercial, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. I'm gonna dye this today. I wanna keep half the charcoal this color, but I'm gonna go ahead and soak it in the citric acid anyway, because Tussa Silk, well, all kinds of silk, they take dye really beautifully, but frequently the dye doesn't exhaust when you dye silk. I don't really know how that works, but it happens a lot. And they actually notified us in the package that this might and probably would bleed. I'm going to go ahead and let it soak in the citric acid, hoping that that'll help whatever is still in this fiber and not stuck, stick, if that makes sense. And then some of it will rinse out and I'm fine with that. So I'm going to basically, I guess, put this in like kind of a hank. So I'm looping it like this. I'm just gonna do like a really, yeah, that's what I want, a loose hank. So it's looped in three big loops. I'm gonna grab it in the middle and very loosely put the end around for just for soaking. I'm gonna do them both that way and I'm gonna soak them separately um, because again, this should bleed. And actually, if you ever buy silk from my Etsy shop, it says right in the listing like, hey, silk bleeds a lot. It's just the way it is, man. If you've ever bought sari silk, you know. These are hanked up. I'm gonna go ahead and put them into soak in some citric acid and then come back and dye these. 
so I'm gonna um, soak the white in this. And the reason why I split, split the charcoal, I did say this I think, but I'm gonna dye, I'm gonna over dye half of it and then I'm gonna keep half of it charcoal. Okay, so I'm gonna basically use like a scant tablespoon for this four ounces. That is probably way more than I need. So the viscose probably won't take much dye at all, and the um, the silk will take some, and I expect the wool to take the most. I'll be back in a couple hours to dye this. First, I wanted to show you how much, if at all, this stuff bled, so let me get gloves on. So I'm gonna put both of these in this pan, but I'm only gonna dye one of them. It's been in here with the citric acid for, gosh, what time is it? Like six hours, it was like 10 a.m. and now it's four. You guys, okay, so you can see this, right? It barely bled, if it, if it bled at all, it was so, so little. I'm trying to get the light on it so you can see better. It's, and I only soaked it once. I did not soak this multiple times. So I don't know if that citric acid helped it take up again or if it just didn't hardly bleed at all. So I'm gonna squeeze one of these out and roll it up in a towel. my electric kettle I, what I do is put in like half a cup of boiling water and mix it and then I'll put a cup and a half of cold in so that I'm not putting super hot dye water right on this fiber there are times when I'm okay with putting it on hot but I don't want to do that today so I'm gonna put the cold in now and I'm gonna use the plum on one of the white ones too and that way we'll get to see how it looks like over dyed and then on a white one leaving that in there. Okay, I do not need it all. I'm just gonna get it really well in there. I'm gonna flip it. Ooh, that's a lot of dye. And then I'm gonna rinse my hands off. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take one of the white ones and put it in the same pan. I hope they don't turn out the same color. <laughs> that would suck. Now I'm gonna flip it. Good, they're not gonna be the same color. Phew! That would have been a bummer, huh? I'm gonna put this on the stove with the lid on and let it start cooking. All right, so I'm gonna take the last white and we're gonna do a different color with that. Okay, for this one, I am gonna use Jacquard Teal 
and I'm gonna add a little bit of the sky blue, which is just more of a true blue, so that it's more on the blue side. Okay, that was the teal. I'm gonna put in about a half a cup of hot water. Then, let's see. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna add about another cup and a half of the cold again. Oh, phew, no dye, okay. <laughs> I was like, whoa. That's good. But I have some leftover periwinkle from something else that I dyed the other day, and I want to add that to this. that in I'm gonna flip it over okay. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side so I'm gonna Pour the sky blue and the teal mixture. Over most of it. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of periwinkle. Mom just came home, you guys are about to get serenaded somehow. Okay, so that's good. I'm gonna get this on the stove. I think I'm gonna add a tiny bit more periwinkle. Do I want to? Oh, it's really good. So we're gonna cook this for, both of these for about 20 minutes and then see if it's exhausted. If not, I'll go five more minutes. These two were the white. That was four ounces. And then these two, <laughs> there's more stuff to it. These two, were both this color. I left this the way it showed up. But you guys saw, they they mentioned that it was gonna bleed so I still soaked it in the citric acid and everything and it, it either made the color absorb correctly or, um, and these two, oh my gosh. So strange, things pick up wool in my house. So these two are actually dyed with the exact same color, so you probably saw it in the video. I'm getting excited to start spinning these. I'm gonna take them with me to the yarn shop today while I'm working, and if I have any time to spin, this is what I'm gonna start working on, but I wanted to show you how they all looked before I started. Aren't they really pretty? So the goal is a color work yoke, I think if I don't have enough yarn, I actually have some spun up from a different paradise box, but we'll, work, we'll talk about the project when we get to it. I'm very happy with how they turned out. And I think dyeing, over dyeing this one is just so cool. I could make whole sweaters out of this over dyed in like a bunch of different colors because it just got so much, um, I don't, it just got so much variation and it's gonna just be so pretty spun up. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me dye it. And as I get further on in the project, I will update you. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye.